So while I'm in here, I'm just gonna make sure that Forge can connect to our servers. I'm sure it can. This just means it's testing that it can log into the servers to perform maintenance tasks. Okay, and it can, perfect. Next thing I wanna do is connect our domain to our load balancer. And what you wanna do is send your domain traffic to your load balancer because that is the entry point to your application. So I know I have this public IP address and I can add my domain and point it to this IP address. Now my scaling Laravel domain is hosted on AWS or it's controlled on AWS rather. And we saw I had a demo scaling Laravel.com domain there previously when we were creating servers on AWS. I'm gonna create a new record set here for a new domain and that is just gonna be forge.scalinglaravel.com. It'll be an A type record because I'm pointing to an IP address specifically, not to another subdomain or anything. And the value is just gonna be the IP address. And I like to turn the TTL down a little bit, 60 seconds, so it's nice and quick to update. And we can create that. And we can see that domain is here, forge.scalinglaravel.com, an A type record, and it's pointing to the IP address of my load balancer. Perfect. So I don't know if that'll work yet or not. We can try it out. So forge.scalinglaravel.com and not found. So it's actually going to the server, but there's no servers hooked up to it. So we get a not found error. So perfect, that is up and running. The next thing I wanna do and what you need to do for any new application server in the load balancer rotation is hook up your application to it. So I'm gonna go into my application servers and I'm gonna create an application in it and they're all gonna have the same domain. It's gonna be forge.scalinglaravel.com. In other words, you're gonna put whatever domain your application should be used under here for the domain. Mine is the Laravel application. Public directory is gonna be the web directory. I don't need to allow wildcard subdomains and we'll add the site. Perfect, and while that's building, I'll do that on the app server two as well. Okay, great. Back in our application one server, we can click on into that and see that our forge.scalinglaravel.com application is finished being installed. So we can go ahead and click in that and set it up. So it's gonna be a Git repository, and this is going to be scalinglaravel slash forge.scalinglaravel.com. And I'm gonna go from the master branch, install composer dependencies, it's GitHub again. So that should be all set. All right, great. So that's installed, and I'm just gonna turn on quick deploys here just so we get a update of our code whenever we push to the master branch. And I'll do the exact same thing for the application in server two. And we'll turn on quick deploy just like on the last application server, so that's now on. Now on both servers, if we view the latest deployment log, we'll have no log available yet because we have not deployed. I could click deploy now, but it's going to fail. And the reason it's going to fail is because I don't have an environment set up yet and there's no local database on each application server and the default environment is gonna have a database pointing at localhost. So the last thing I wanna do here is get my environment set up on each application server. So I'll start with application server one. We'll go to our application and head to environment and we can edit the environment here. So we have a default one here. I'm just gonna copy and paste another one I have starting at app key and app name is not Laravel, but scaling Laravel. I do want it to be in production and I have an app key here. Now the DB connection is my SQL, but the host is question marks. The database is scaling Laravel like we created before, but the password are question marks and our Redis host are question marks. And these are things we need to fill in. So if I open a new tab here and check out my servers, I need to fill out the database server. And the database server, I'm gonna use the private network IP address. So we're connecting to it over the private network IP and not the public one. So this is much faster because it's the private network and the servers are very close to each other. So that network is a closed network in the same data center because all my servers are in the same data center and that'll make this a really fast connection. So I've copied that, I'll head on over here and use that for my database host. And the DB password is just the one I have to fill out from our database server. So that had a user forge by default and scaling Laravel is the database I set up and that password is just the string. And the next thing we need to do is our Redis host. So let's head back over here. I'll go up to my servers and we have our cache server and that cache server has this private network IP address. So once again, when we're communicating within the network, we're gonna use the private network IP addresses. So I can just fill that in for the Redis host. So let's see, we have scaling Laravel, production, an app key, the database server at private network, the Redis server, private network, and our database credentials to connect to. So let's go ahead and save that. And I'm just gonna edit this environment again. I'm gonna copy that and we can head to server two and put in the exact same environment. So forge, environment, edit the environment. 
and I'll copy and paste this. Now, one thing to know is that the app key has to be the same on every application server, and that's so that it can encrypt and decrypt cookies and other things correctly on every instance of your application. If the app key is different, then the encryption will create a different hash every time it encrypts data, and that will affect your cookies and anything you encrypt in your application code. Then of course, the DB host and the Redis host and all that is the same because every application server is connecting to the same database server or cache server or any other service that's not hosted directly on the app servers. So we'll save that for both of those. And we can't go to the servers yet. If we go to the public IP address here, we're going to get the default site here. It's not going to go to the correct one yet because it's expecting a URL to be used that is forge.scalinglaravel.com. So let's actually see what happens in terminal here. I'm going to curl the IP address here. And what we get is that default PHP page. That's just the output of that PHP page we saw. Now if I do curl dash H to add a header, and that header is going to be the host header, and the value of that host header is going to be forge.scalinglaravel.com. This is going to tell Nginx to use the server configuration for the forge.scalinglaravel.com site. And we'll get something else here. And what we do is actually get an, ex an exception. So class config net does not exist. We have some error here, and I'll figure this out later. It might be because we didn't actually deploy our code yet. So I'd like to try to deploy now, but I can't yet because we still have some communication issues. In other words, the database server and the Redis server are not allowing external connections from other servers in our group of servers here in our application for the forge.scalinglaravel.com application. And we'll tackle that in the next video.